give a reason why angle E is equal to X. This is Euclidean geometry. Where do we start? With the keywords. We go through the question statements, we extract the keywords, and that's what's going to help us to answer all the questions sticking to the keywords. So let's go ahead and take a look. In the diagram below, D, E, and F are points on the circle centered at Q. Well, D, E, F, and E, right? And then the circle is centered at Q. That is easy to see. A, G, F is a tangent. So there we go. We have a keyword which is tangent, right? Why is tangent a keyword? Because we have the tan chord theorem. Uh, we know something about uh, tangents that originate from the same po from the from a common point, so on and so on. So there's a lot that we can talk about with regards to tangents. And then E D is produced to meet the tangent at A. B and C are points on A E such that G B is parallel to F D. That is also very important because uh, there's a lot we can see about parallel lines, right? And then G C is joined. G C D F is a cyclic quad. So point number three, we have a cyclic quad. We have a cyclic quad. And then lastly, angle F Q D is equal to two X. Maybe let's just go ahead and highlight our cyclic quad. It is G C D F. So that is G C D F. G C D F is a cyclic quad okay and then the first question 9.2.1 give a reason why angle e is equals to x so let's go ahead and take a look and see why that can be the case why that is actually the case so angle e is right here and it should be easy to see that angle q on triangle dqf is 2x right so why is angle E equals to X? It is because angle Q is equals to 2X. And then the angle at the center is twice that at the circumference. So angle at center is equals to 2 times that at circumference. So because Q is 2X, E should be equals to X. That should be relatively easy to see. So there we go. We have given a reason why E is equals to X. And then the second question, 9.2.2, prove that GC is parallel to FE. So GC, this line, uh, let me highlight that line. GC is parallel to FE. We're supposed to show that GC and FE are parallel to each other. All right. So there's a couple of ways we can prove that they are parallel to each other. Like if C1 is equal to angle E, then the two lines are parallel to each other. If uh, G1 is equal to F1 plus 2, they are parallel to each other. If the two co-interior angles add up to 180, then they are parallel to each other. So there's a couple of ways we can use to prove uh, that the two lines are parallel to each other. Well, we know that E is X, right? Um, let's go back to our keyword and see how we can answer the question. The first keyword is tangent. The first keyword is tangent. So how can we show that those two lines are parallel using a uh, tangent? So let's take a look. Which line is the tangent? AGF is a tangent. So this line is a tangent, right? And then the chord FD subtends E, right? So what does that mean? It means that angle F1 is equals to X. Angle F1 is equals to X. Why is angle F1 equals to X? Angle F1 is equals to X uh, because of uh, the tan chord theorem. Maybe let's just write that down and see where it takes us. So F1 is equals to X tan chord theorem right and uh, that is easy to see we don't know where that is going to take us ultimately but we should be able to say that uh, f1 is equal to x because of the tan chord theorem and then that is um the first keyword which is tangent the second keyword is gb is parallel to fd uh, it is not quite obvious how that can help us 
but if you take a look at our third keyword cyclic quad we can see that this angle c2 the angle c2 we can see that um, c2 plus f1 is equal to 180 degrees right uh, opposite angles of a cyclic quad opposite angles of a cyclic quad so what does that mean it means that c2 is equal to 180 minus x c2 is equal to 180 minus x so here instead of having c2 we can write 180 minus x but take a look at this if that is 180 minus x then c2 plus angle e gives us 180 which is co-interior right of two parallel lines so c2 plus angle e is equal to 180 minus x plus x which is equal to 180 degrees so in proving that c2 is equal to plus angle e is equal to 180 degrees we have essentially showed that gc is parallel to f e gc is parallel to f e because of uh, co-interior angles the sum of the co-interior angles and uh, we can easily see that it is 180 so the the two lines must be parallel to each other so that is 9.2.2 so let's erase all this junk let's erase all this junk and just uh, denote that the two lines are parallel the two lines are parallel right let's do it like that that is uh, way easier to see okay 9.2.2 let's take a look at 9.3.3 so 9.3.3 well 9.2.3 we're supposed to prove that a b over b d is equal to a c over c e so let's start by taking a look at a b and b d right so this is a b uh, this is b d and then we have a c which is on the same side right and c e okay that is easy to see right so what can we say about a b divided by what can we say about a b uh, divided by b d which is obvious obviously a uh, gb as we can clearly see here denoted is parallel to fd so ab over bd should be equals to ag over gf because the line gb is parallel to the line fd uh, there we go that is quite easy to see uh, but then because now we have proved that gc is parallel to fe take a look at this we can see that ag over gf right let me highlight ag over gf so this is ag and then this is gf we have proved that gc is parallel to fe so we can say that ag over gf is equal to ac right over ce we can only say that because we have proved that gc is parallel to fe right now we can say that but take a look at this uh, we have ab over bd being equals to ag over gf and here we have ag over gf being equals to ac over ce so clearly ab over bd should be equals to ac over ce maybe i should not highlight that but this instead why are we saying that those two things are equal they are equal because they are both equals to ag over gf so there we go that is uh 9.2.3 it's quite a basic equation if you've been solving some equations uh, that has to do with proportionality you should have came across a question like this where we have two pairs of uh, parallel lines and we have to uh, do something like this but anyway stories let's take a look at 9.2.4 so 9.2.4 it is further given that 
Well, it is further given. So already I'm thinking that what I was doing 9.2.3 is going to be is going to help me here in 9.2.4, right? So it is further given that AB is equals to 12 units. CE is equals to 22.5 units and then 5AG is equals to 4GF. Uh, determine the length of CD. So we're looking for the length of CD. Uh, what is becoming apparent to me, even before I go back to the sketch and analyze the equation, I can write this in a proper way. I can write this in a proper way. Because take a look at this. In 9.2.3, we're talking about AG over GF. And then here we have 5 AG being equals to 4 GF. So let's say rather AG is equals to 4 over 5 GF. And then divide both sides by GF, right? We're going to have AG over GF being equals to 4 over 5. So this is perfectly fine. We are deducing it from uh, these. Okay. Because this is easier to digest. This is the form that we can use instead of having 5 AG being equals to 4 GF. So there we go. We have AG over GF being equals to 4 over 5. We are looking for the length of CD. CD is this part here. CD is this part here. But let's just play around with what we did in 9.2.3. In 9.2.3, we ended up saying that AB over not BE but BD. Here we're supposed to have BD. We end up saying AB over BD is equals to ag over gf right uh, what are we given here we're given the length of ab so we have 12 being equals to ag over gf is 4 over 5 and then 12 over bd so already we can see here that uh, we should be able to find bd so bd will be equals to 12 multiplied by 5 over 4 so 12 multiplied by 5 over 4, that is 15. So BD is equals to 15 units. That's when we play with the fact that these two are equals to each other. But we also see that AG over GF is equals to AC over CE, right? So again, we have 4 over 5 being equals to uh, what are we given in the equation statement? We are given CE, which is 22.5. So 22.5, and then on the numerator, we have AC. So AC is going to be equal to, so that is 4 multiplied by 22.5, everything divided by 5, which is 18 units. So BD is 15 units, AC is 18 units. Let's go to a sketch and see how that will look like. Okay, so let me just erase all this. So we are saying that um, AC is 18 units. So from A to C, that is 18 units. And then from B to D is 15 units. So from B to D is 15 units. Um, what other piece of information do we have? AB is 12 units, right? So AB is 12 units and then ce is 22.5 so ce is 22.5 so from a to c okay look at our sketch from a to c we have 18 units right from a to b we have 12 units so from b to c we shall have 18 minus 12 which is 6 units. So that is BC. BC is 6 units. So let me erase this. And let me erase this. And write uh, 6 units. BC is 6 units. But BD is 15 units. So CD shall be equal to 15 minus 6. Which is equal to 9 units. 